could use more resources. <clears throat> All right, so Anna, if you want to uh, uh, step back or get the camera out to frame Craig up for the intro. Okay. All right, and let me know when you are ready and I'll count you down. We're ready almost any time. You just. All right, say. then, and three, two, Hey gang, we're here, week 29. <laughs> um, I had a request earlier today to do a figure. So I sorted through what I had around and uh, kind of came up with a figure that I shot while I was on location in uh, Venice. I was actually doing a lot of painting of canals and buildings and stuff there. And one evening we decided to walk over to St. Mark's which is outrageously crowded. Uh, and I was going to sit down and have a cup of coffee and realize if you have a cup of coffee at St. Mark's in the evening, it's about 15 bucks. Uh, so I didn't have a cup of coffee. Uh, what I did is walked around and I saw all these great musicians playing. And I went around and said, I'm going to shoot some pictures. These guys are moving around. And so I shot some photos and, uh, uh, in speaking earlier today, after their figurative request, uh, I let Anna pick and this is the one she picked. And so what we have here is a lot of geometric forms with one big organic form, which is pretty much the white shirt and this uh, gentleman playing the piano. I am gonna be deleting this character. I can see very, a little bit of the piano there, change the format a little bit, cropped in a little bit. And uh, pretty much with that, we're gonna get going. I did a very, crude charcoal kind of lay in. And uh, once again, with my uh, assumption that's probably wrong, it probably is. So we're gonna go in, I'm gonna get a, take three to five minutes, get a drawing down and then uh, start painting. The key is, is shapes. Um, and if you look at that and to squint your eyes, you will see that basically a lot of dark, an interesting white shape, uh, a flesh tone shape, and some breakups of spaces. That's it. So the key is getting those shapes in. The other thing is the kind of lighting. What kind of lighting do we have? Well, there's a little backlight, but it's stage lighting. It's outdoor, it's stage lighting. So it's artificial lighting. And the light doesn't come from any one direction. Light's coming from all over. Although there's a more of a predominant light here on the front of the individual than there is on the back of the individual. So if I, that'll stay in my head. We're gonna try and give the guy a little bit more character, not that he, no offense to him, uh, in his face so that uh, would make it a little more interesting. And I'm gonna eliminate some of this little stuff back in here. These are, are arches on the other side of St. Mark's Square with lights coming out, but they're kind of interfering. On the back, it doesn't bother me. It really bothers me up in here. So I'm gonna move some stuff around. All right. Uh, my palette today is Radiant white, uh, Naples yellow light, yellow ochre, a little bit of cab red, uh, alizarin and crimson, ultramarine blue, sap green. Uh, this is, um, what do you call it? Asphaltum. Asphaltum. And a little bit of burnt sienna that I still have on the palette. And I think I'm gonna use the burnt sienna today. So with that in mind, uh, I've got my trusty little rosemary flat number 12 here. And we're gonna to start to lay in a bunch of these dark shapes because that's the, that'll tell me something. But even before I do that, I'm gonna take like a number two and we're just gonna get a little bit of a drawing in. Uh, and I, I kind of crudely laid out a, a charcoal, which approximate what I want, but I think I can do a better drawing and be a little bit more accurate. I think his head is gonna go about here top of his head, back of his head. This is the portrait. So we're not trying to uh, paint this specific individual. I find when I draw, if I use more straight lines, as opposed to trying to go whoop, all the coolie, curly cues, no, that kind of, the, the roundness happens as I paint. So there, basically, we've got his head, although I don't like the shape. 
it's a little too long. Maybe I need to shorten it a little bit. Uh, eye socket's going to sit kind of right in there. Uh, the nose kind of there and the mouth kind of there for like, that's how we start it. Uh, angle of the angle of the collar, angle of the collar, very important. Where does that back of that intersect? It intersects almost with the nose. So the intersection of that collar is gonna be about there. Arm, probably have a little too big of a, he's a little too large of a head, I think. You're gonna get that angle in. And then the angle of the arm that comes down. This is about where I see the back, back of the shirt. His arm sits down somewhere in here. The front of that arm lines up almost here. So it's gonna be about in here. Then we're gonna get a little bit of the front. And then where's that cuff line up? Well, you look, you look right straight up. Where's that cuff line up? Lines up almost with the chin. So we're gonna go straight down from here. That's where I'm gonna want that cuff. All right, which is gonna tell me I'm gonna want the piano back a little further than the way I had it blocked in initially. So we're gonna do that. The angle of the arm, a little bit of the hand. The hand is kind of out of focus. I kind of like it like that. Uh, this looks pretty good about here. This looks like about right. A little curvature in the piano. And right about here is the front. The top is going to be in here. I'm going to move this over just a touch. I'm not going to worry about it until I get into painting the shakes. The shakes will tell me more. Uh, I, I know I've mentioned this many times. Whether, I don't care what you're painting. You're painting a figurative piece. You're painting just a head. You're painting still life. Uh, the shapes tell you more about uh, the accuracy of what you're doing than the lines because we see shapes, we don't see lines. Lines are our way of indicating the edges of shapes. Kind of keep that in mind. It's always good to know, it's just drawing tools. Um, little bow tie up in here. There's some stuff back in here, but we'll kind of leave it alone. I'm gonna abandon this at present and I'm gonna start laying in the dark shapes, which will give me the silhouette of the character. So for that, I've got my, asphalt and a little bit of blue and a lot of medium big number 12 brush and let's start with the piano now I just noticed as I was putting that paint down it wasn't going down easy so I added more medium if your paint if you're having to struggle to get your paint to stick add see that now watch just by adding a little bit of turp to what I just did It's come a little bit of the, a little too much of the earth tone is coming out. So I threw some more blue into it. So it kind of, I want it to neutralize. And initially I don't, oh, by the way, I should, I'm working on a piece of hardboard that I've toned with some acrylics. You want to be able to lay this in quick. It's not thick either at this particular time. Your paint is not thick at all. In the beginning, I don't, occasionally I'll try something where I'll just go thick right off the bat. Um, but generally speaking, I don't do that. Generally speaking, I go thin to thick, which is the old traditional way of working. Again, a little bit too much warm, so a little more blue, there we go. Take it on down. These are negative spaces in here. Now we got the guy's trousers back here, so I, I've left those out. Right, let's get the guy's pants in. Understandably, this is kind of not the most exciting stuff to watch. Uh, so I try and give you some info while I'm doing this. And again, I'm reading shapes and, I get, and I'm still, I'm, I'm staying with a concept that I've thrown out to you guys a lot. And that is 
energy versus control. Uh, this is the energy and it starts to set up. Now I'm gonna take a little bit, I added a lot of terp to that. And we're gonna do this. I'm gonna add more terp, more pigment. And we'll just, And truthfully, I would just as soon paint into this guy a little bit, paint a little too much than I would. We're gonna probably hold some of this space right in here. So I'll leave that alone. There's a big banner right in here. Oh, I kind of like it, I'm gonna use it, I think. There's a kind of, it's very near the color of everything else, so. Um, and for lack of something better, I think I'm gonna warm it up a little bit. I threw some um, burnt sienna into it. And as I go down here, I think I'm gonna warm it just a touch. I don't mind losing uh, any of my information regarding the piano. Front of his face, back here. I'm just gonna do this because if I wanna put any of those light areas in, I'll deal with that later. Give a little indication here of what's going on. This hair is going to come in here. And that's why I kind of painted that in. Best thing I can tell you is please don't be afraid to make a mistake, to do something wrong, um, because that will keep you, that will. Number one, it slows you down a little bit, but that isn't the reason. The reason is um, even if you go slower and you try and be accurate, there's a good chance, unless you spend a tremendous amount of time in your drawing, that there's gonna be problems. Um, and you wanna correct your problems at the shape stage rather than the detail or refinement stage. Well, that's a good point. Glad I just said that. Write that down. <laughs> you want to, if you're going to make mistakes, you'd rather make them at the shape stage than the refinement stage. There's a guy back there with a jacket on. We're going to get rid of him. Sound like a mafia guy, don't it? We're going to get rid of him. Okay. And a little bit of stuff back in here. But we got a, we got a kind of a feel for the shape of this as to how it's shaping up. So very quickly, I've taken it from line to silhouette. So we have a little bit of a, the character of the silhouette. And this up here, I said, I'm going to, oh, look at the drip. Can't, can't call me not contemporary, man, when I let drips happen. Um, let's take and do it this big. I just added white, a little bit of blue to that color. And there's a big banner back here, which is kind of neat. I kind of like it. It's right about here. And I may have that a little lighter than I want. I don't know. I like it because it's geometric and everything else in the painting, with, with the exception of the figure, is pretty geometric. So we'll just kind of leave that alone right now. We'll just kind of just smudge it around a little bit. Uh, go back from this side with a little bit of a darker color. Okay. I'm gonna set my that number 12 down. I'm gonna pick up a number eight because I'm gonna go in and lay a flesh tone in because I wanna to start to get this shape worked out. So for that, I'm gonna use some burnt sienna. A little yellow ochre. Now keep in mind, burnt, burnt sienna, and I, as I mix this up, I wanna show you what happens if I just use plain burnt sienna. It gets real hot. I don't know if you guys can see that. So I don't wanna start that hot. I like, I'm gonna gray it down with a little bit of blue. And that that mellows out the flesh tone with the white and the burnt sienna. So instead of that, I end up with that. I prefer to start with that. All right, so we're gonna come up, we're gonna try to do the shape of this guy's head right now. I'm not gonna worry about the features so we get much later into the painting. Go with that old John Singer Sargent concept. Uh, said he could paint eight days on a head without ever getting into the features. Love that, love that concept. I'm gonna 
warm it up around the nose. So what did I do to warm it up? Whoa, I added a little bit of alizarin crimson. And we're gonna, there's a really nice shadow going on in there, but right now I'm not gonna worry about the shadow. Cheek, warm ear, warm. Back on his neck, back behind his ear. Wing of his nostril. It's number eight. This, these flats are just wonderful. Um, they're, they're, they're very flexible, so you can get a lot of stuff out of it, you can load a lot of paint on it. They're just, I, I like flats very much. Although, you know, I know artists that love brights. And brights have their place. There is nothing wrong with them whatsoever. Uh, I was using one yesterday. <laughs> Sounds funny. Okay, there's a shadow. So we have a little bit of an eye socket in there. And what I did is I just mixed some of the background color into the flesh color. And this is for placement. I throw a little, I don't, it's a little colder than I want. So I throw a little bit more alizarin or I could throw a little asphalt to be the one into it. I don't want to spend too much time here because this, this is going to happen later. I'm not getting quite the punch I want out of it. So I darkened it just a little bit here, you guys. And it's, oh, this whole chin is in shadow, as is his neck. So if you, if you play your cards right, the head starts to come together structurally um, with the lay-in of just pretty much a simple light and simple shadow. I think, okay, in here, not crazy about it, but uh, let's get that in and that in, and then I'm gonna leave it alone. Except, I just said I was gonna leave it alone, except <laughs> a little bit in his hair, just so we have, and it's gonna, his hair's gonna come to about here and move its way back. Down on the sideburn. A little bit in there. A little dark back in here. Doing all this with this number eight, you guys, just so you know. It's a number eight. It's the ivory brand. A lot of times people want to know what I'm using. So it's the number eight. Uh, it's the rosemary and it's the ivory. Now, when I want to get really refined, sometimes I will use the um, their uh, mongoose, synthetic mongoose. And I may use it at the end of this. I don't know. I just have to feel, how's this thing shaping up? I don't want to go much further than that right now. I want to get start to block that. that uh, his shirt in. Yeah, we, if you're getting a lot of glare, maybe I can do this. It's because it's uh, black. Oh, still glare? Mm -hmm. I can, hang on. I'm gonna do something, you guys. This, it's actually, this is a good, when you, when you start painting and you're getting glare, it's giant because of the angle of the, um, I don't know if I can bring that down low enough though. No, I can't. I was gonna, if yeah, you lean this out, way. there's probably less glare on it here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so what I have to do is I'm gonna do, do some adjustments real quick, just so you guys can see. Whenever you work with darks, darks will give you more glare. Lights won't. So I'm gonna raise this just a touch. Let's get it up there. A little bit, we're gonna move. Hang on a second. Yeah, let's get it up about here and then I'll I'll, I'll do something with the top. Excuse the uh, adjustments here. Yeah. Okay, I just want to tighten it so nothing falls while we're painting. Excuse me for a second. I go back. Got it. So what you do is you lean that 
that painting more forward. And I'll show you what I mean. You probably have seen it already. So I, if you have the a top piece, you can lean it forward. So that'll, that actually comes forward now and should probably show a little bit less glare than it did earlier. I hope that's better because I can't get this any further back. So we're going to leave it at that right now. I'm going to go for the guy's shirt. Now his shadow, he's outdoors. The shadows can be very cold. In this case, they're not. They're pretty warm. So I'm going to mix kind of some ochre into almost the hair color. I want to make sure that I'm not too, uh, too dark or too light. That's about right. That's going to be similar. It's maybe a little, could be a little grayer. Okay, so we're going to just get this laid in very quickly. And I'm going to be wrong. I'm going to lay it in with the idea of overlapping over it. Now, you may wonder a little bit about this. So I've been using the 12 to, just to show you my thinking. I'm going to take white and maple's yellow. I want to show you. And this will tell me. So my shadow is going to be almost the color of the board. And I put that, pop that in there sometimes, just so you know where your white is, where your light light is going to be. Now, there's a lot of variation in whites in the shadows, not in other, in other colors, not so much, but in white or any light color, you'll get a lot of color variation within those shadows uh, because white is more reflective than your darker colors are less reflective. Therefore, you don't see as much uh, color or you may not see as much shadow information as you would in white. Okay, so got that. I want to get it down on the sleeve, down on this arm, down in here. Again, all right, now that's a base shadow color. So if I take that base shadow color and I deepen it a little bit, I just mix a little bit of the background color into it. Uh, and I think maybe a little warm wood might help it too. So maybe a little bit of burnt sienna. This might be a little too strong, but I'm gonna give it a shot. No, it's not too strong. It's not strong enough. Uh, okay, there. And we're doing what a lot of people like to call shadow detail. It's it's just a deeper shadow is all it is. It's the, the shadow is there and I just made it one stage darker. Now we get some pulls back in his shirt. These loose shirts are kind of nice, particularly loose, these loose white shirts because you get some nice pulls going on in there a little bit, maybe more under Every time I paint into this base shadow color, you got to be aware that what you're doing is you're mixing those colors together. So you're going to be manipulating them back and forth. So I'm going to leave that alone and go back to my number eight with the white. Maybe not go quite that white. Maybe add a little bit of, of ochre to it just to warm it up. So it's not, so I want to leave myself room to go whiter. So that, that feels pretty good right there. So I'm going to start up around the collar the back of the shoulder. Now this is going to begin to tell me how accurate my drawing was. As Soon as I start to get this, then I can correct drawing. If I see drawing problems, I will correct the drawing. So the consistency of light to shadow, something I should probably talk about. Uh, the same kind of light that is illuminating the shirt is illuminating the head. Therefore, the same kind of value consistency from light to shadow should be equal. So if, if we had a percentage chart, we could say, oh, the shadow in the face is 20% darker than the shadow, than the light, then this should be the same. Right now I have this a little strong on purpose because I wanna be able to go back and, and model more into that face. Hopefully you follow me in that. I, it sounds kind of, abbreviated in terms of my uh, my description, but. Okay. 
So we're just, I'm just basically painting the shapes I see. Based on the knowledge that there's an arm under this and these are folds and wrinkles that occur because of the uh, individual's action. So you get, I always say several kinds of folds. There's what I call a compression fold. When you push something together, there is a, a gravity fold, which is something just hanging. Uh, there is a, a drapery fold when a, something is happening between two forms. And then there is also the tension fold. And tension folds is when something pulls, one thing pulls against another. Right in here, these are kind of what we call tension folds. Not that you need to know that, but you need to kind of, it's really helpful to know that folds occur for wrinkles folds. Then you get the kind of the arbitrary wrinkles in products that really are not descriptive at all as in terms of what the product is all about. Okay, so let's go into this arm. This arm has got a lot of light on it. Notice I'm trying to use the brush in different ways. I'm not painting everything the same and I'm still holding the brush like this. I, I want the freedom. I don't want that so uh, rigid and refined that it's, and as soon as I hold it like this, I'm gonna go more refined, more detailed. So, but initially I don't want that. Initially I want a little bit more energy, a little bit more character into my paint. And I'm, when I say I want, I'm referring to me. You may want something different. Some people like to have it refined all the way through. Uh, only time, the only time, and I know I've mentioned this, that I do that is if I'm doing a portrait. But even there sometimes, if I'm just doing a study for a portrait, then I, I approach it more like this. If I'm doing a finished portrait, uh, I will most likely have a much more refined drawing down because I do not want to lose the likeness. Oh, I like that stroke. I don't like that. They all don't happen like that, you guys. It's so cool when you get these kind of things that work for you. Okay, now we get the front of his shirt down. He has a little bit of light, which helps to find the hand right about in here. and a little bit below it, not quite as bright. I still may add some more brights up in here. This is just, right now it's too bad. I know I have to add more shadow, more info in the shadow, because it's very, uh, I, I'm not being very uh, clear and defined as to what, what's going on in the shadow, because there's a lot more going on. That's his arm, and then that's his body right here. It has a little light there up under his arm, a little bit back in here. This is kind of in between. It's not pure, it's not real light and it's not real shadowy. So it's kind of in between. And you're, you'll find a lot of that. Uh, so I'm gonna pick, I'm taking the light color I had on the brush, just mixed it with the shadow. And we'll come with an in-between, right? So it's not as light as the light, it's not as dark as the shadow. And I may want to go back in here and add a little bit of uh, reflected light back into that shirt. So we start to get, shirt's starting to come off. As I stand back, the shirt is beginning to work. All right, let's get the little snap of the bow tie in. It's dark, um, I'm gonna use this brush to go right back and I'm gonna, I'm gonna add some red to it. So I'm gonna add a lot of burnt sienna to that tie. Maybe even a little bit of cad red light. Not that it's there, I just want a little bit of a snap to it. So it isn't dull and black. So we're gonna put the front part of it in right there. Kind of like the mixture where it's mushing into that paint. Mm. 
Wishing is a term that I use a lot. It's a Okay, we got kind of the feel of that tie-in. Try it, you notice, I tried to put it in as simple as I could. I did not sit there and try and neatly draw that tie-in and paint it. That's because I want, at this point, I want there to be some energy and some character to the paint. And as I go to refine this thing, hopefully what I will do is bring it a little bit more control to it. So I, I can see right now, uh, that in the hand, it's a little lighter than the face. Now, why is that? The face is facing here, the hand is facing here. The light is coming from above, as you can see on this. Therefore, the top of the hand, this is gonna catch more light than this. And planes on his face that begin to lean a little bit upward will catch a little bit more light. So what we're gonna do is I lighten that, this color. Not enough, I can see right now a little bit more Naples yellow light to it. And we're just gonna take and paint the gesture of the hand in, not the detail, just the gesture up where the knuckle is, down where the hand with a little bit more warm goes into the sleeve. You know, uh, something I've noticed, I, I, I tend, I've. I, I realize I painted a lot of mu musicians. Uh, they're real, they're fun to paint. I mean, why do I paint them? Because they're cool. Maybe I wish I was one. Maybe that's it. Maybe it's it's uh, the envy coming out. I don't know. Music and art go together. There's now when, let's get the shadow part of that hand in. Um, go back to kind of the shadow that I have right there and we'll kind of hit right in here. It's a little stronger than I wanted, but that's okay right now. It's uh, doesn't bother me. Back on the arm. As it goes into the sleeve, it gets a little darker. We'll just soften it down just by, just with the touch. You can create softness a lot of times with the way you touch things, not the way you, so this looks, pretty good, not really good, just pretty good right now. I hope at the end, it looks really good. That's our goal, to go from pretty good to really good. You wanna go from pretty good to really good instead of from not too good. So if you start not too good, then you got further to go. These are areas of concern that you'll always have with your painting. Now, I see his hair, I'm being a little bit more careful. I'm seeing the, his hair come over almost above his eyebrow, almost right in there. So I just, with my number eight, pulled that over. I probably pulled it over a little too much, but it's not done yet. So I can be wrong. Now, where does his, his shadow below his ear? So all of a sudden we're starting to define his ear, define a little bit on the back of his head. I wanna look very carefully now at some of these areas up in here. Uh, I can see some really interesting color variations. So I'm gonna save that. I, Cause I, I'll tell you why I'm gonna save it. Um, I know my downfall. I can get hung up in areas like that forever. I don't wanna right now. I wanna save that. I'll, I'll keep an eye on the time. Now we're just about 30 minutes into it. So accomplished a lot in 30 minutes. A lot of people have, um, have asked from time to time if I do a, a quick study demo. This is almost a quick study demo right now. Um, the difference is I wouldn't have all the other stuff going on just to go in, neaten that up a little bit. I like that edge that I got there, kind of nice. Uh, there's going to be some light, which is going to help define the back of his head back in here. So I kind of want to just let some of that get lost. This, this is too light. I threw it in earlier and I just painted it a little too light. Now that's too dark. Okay, so you, you kind of flirt back and forth until you get what you're after. Now, there's some light on the top of his head. 
definitely want to get that. Not now. You want to hold off. I, I always like to tell people, I like to turn the lights on, so to speak. So to speak, paint it, paint it as if the light isn't there and then let the start to illuminate it. Now, if I look carefully, I can begin to see the feeling of fingers, but they're all blurred. So I'm just going to kind of indicate them like that. So we have a little feeling of a finger there. Um, on the edge down in here, it gets a little bit of cool light. And I will put that in there, but not right now. Again, I'm going to try and hold off on that face for another 30 minutes. Uh, it's hard because you just, if you're like me, you're just dying to go in and really play with it and have fun with it. But let's get the rest of the painting going, okay? Uh, I got this big banner here. It's probably a little bit too, uh, too light. So I'm just taking my dark color, my blue and my, and just mixing it back into it. I want it to be there, but I want it to be dark. So you almost don't see it. Kind of like, kind of like I, it is in the, uh, in the photo reference. It's probably got a sign on the other side that explains who this group is. There's little groups. If you guys uh, have been to Venice, there's little groups all over. Um, I love, I, I have painted, I'm thinking if I've done it more than once. Yes, I have. I've painted a musician a couple of times from life as they're playing. Um, not really successfully, <laughs> I don't think. Uh, one of them was a wonderful artist, friend of mine, um, who's, a, who's a pretty damn good guitar player, and uh, uh, Laurie Kersey, who posed for me once um, when I was doing a demonstration at some place and she was strumming her guitar and it came out okay. It didn't come out really strong. It came out okay. You know, I mean, I, one thing I, I will tell people when I am working, um, if I think it comes out pretty good, I'll tell you. If I don't think it comes out pretty good, I'll tell you. That came out okay, but not really strong. The other time that I recall, there may have been more. Actually, there was. I did a, a pretty good painting of a model, Patrick, when I used to teach these Asilomar workshops, uh, playing a saxophone. And... And I actually, I, I did a painting of a good, another friend of mine, Bob Frazier, paint, playing a trumpet one time. Or no, I, it wasn't playing. It was playing a, um, uh, what was that? A clarinet he was playing. And then I tried on location when I was in uh, the town of, oh, where was it? Orvieto, no, not Orvieto, uh, Volterra in Italy. There was this gentleman playing guitar and I sat there and painted him. He came over and posed with me at the end. He thought it was really terrific. Uh, and it wasn't. It was okay. It was fun. Oh, it was fun. It was a great exercise. Because, you know, these guys are moving. And it's kind of fun. I re recall being in art school. Uh, in my head painting class with Ronald Brown, I would, um, when we take breaks, I'd stay in my, the spot I was in. And I try and paint someone across the room in gouache. And man, is that hard, but it's so much fun to try. And you know what? At that point, it doesn't matter if it doesn't, you're just, you're, you're learning. That's my whole goal when I paint in, in general um, is to learn. So these things that I'm doing, uh, these, they're a chance for me to paint, but they're also a chance for me to learn. Um, let me see if I have some heat, some yellow. I, I need it specifically for the, uh, I want to pop a little bit of that greenery in. Kind of like that. And I don't have a good yellow, so I'm not going to get a good green. So, yellow medium? Yeah, I'm just going to put some greens down here. Yeah, that's the one. So I'm going to add a little bit of this Hansa yellow medium. It's not as powerful as a CAD, uh, but it's pretty good. And I don't, I don't generally want it that powerful. I like to sneak up on what I call my power colors. So if I need them, I can use them at the end. See, I like to always leave, I usually call it, I like to leave a little room. A little room for my darks, a little room for my lights, and a little room for my bright colors. 
So let's take that number 12 and let's just kind of I'm gonna intermix green back into it from time. I don't want to call too much attention as far as refinement. I, I want this just to feel like a really nice little kind of a colorful abstract snap to this painting. We'll leave that alone. It's a little bit right in here. And a little bit over here. A little, I'm going to keep it very, very indicative. So I'm not concentrating on making it look exactly like uh, shrubbery. I like saying shrubbery, it reminds me of Monty Python. <laughs> shrubbery. Okay, that's, and I, I use the word continuity for this. So there's a continuity of this whole area here kind of moving across. Oh, some nice thick chunky stuff. Oh. What size brush are you using? I'm using a rosemary number eight. I sound like I'm advertising rosemary. Don't I? The reason I'm telling you about rosemary, about these things, is I painted for years, you guys, as an illustrator first and then as a painter. And I've taught for God knows forever, um, seemingly. And so I've used all kinds of brushes. Well, a few years ago, I was at a portrait convention. That's not a few years. It was, yeah, it was in, in Atlanta. And um, I saw these brushes and I really liked them. So I didn't know a lot about them. And I went up to the woman that was selling them and her name was Rosemary. That's the name of the brushes. Um, and I talked to her a little bit about how she got involved in making brushes and and I, for her, it's art. It was art. It's a, another form of art. And that's why, and on top of it, I found out she had been in art school. And uh, so I discovered these brushes. I bought some and I haven't looked back. And her, uh, her daughter now comes to the States every so often to, to and I remember getting her uh, Simi to come to uh, the academy and bringing her array of brushes and giving a little demonstration of how they're made. And man, my students, our students, they're not mine, they're our students at the academy, just ate it up and they loved it. So the reason I tell you is because I painted with so many different, not that there aren't other brushes to use. And I use these little gesso brushes sometimes when I'm painting giant, these little babies here, when I'm painting really giant and I want certain effects, but for an overall brush that you can either use for energy or control, hard to beat, hard to beat guys. Love them. Okay. So there's my little color snaps. Now, I gotta, this is so bright, I gotta do something to make this stand out. Also, we're gonna put some stuff behind him and I'm gonna keep my eye on the time. I've got about 15 more minutes, then I wanna switch over and really work on the head. So let's take the 15 minutes and use them wisely. First thing I'm gonna do is I am going to hit a, now get a little colder, a little cooler. There's a little banner back here. right there and it comes down there it is a canopy good thing Anna's here because she corrects me and I need it okay and then there's arches over here but I don't want this light here is really bothersome particularly where but I don't mind getting the 
feeling of an area, an archway back in here. Not bad. It's just I don't want it interfering with the face. So we're going to do that one, and then we're going to come in and do one here. We're going to keep it way in the background. Maybe down to here, put another one. So we get a little bit of activity. There's another one way over. This is good. It's going to come this way more. And there's another one over right there. OK. Denise wants to know about his chair. Who? Denise, Someone wants to know about what? The chair. The chair. I'm going to put it in. I haven't forgotten it. I just, now is not the time. It's, there's going to be, he's sitting on a little bench and, a, and there's a back to it right in here. And I'm going to put that in. Right now, I just want to get everything else set up. That I can put in with like two or three strokes. So I, I you know, you kind of use your time, particularly when I'm doing these, I use my time as wisely as I possibly can so I can get the most out of this 90 minute type of thing. Um, Betsy wants to know that if you mostly use the ivory rosemary brush. Yes. Yep, I mostly use the ivory. I use, I have their, uh, they have, I think it's called Evergreen. Yeah. And I use that sometimes. It's a little softer. Um, and then, hard to beat these. These these are just fantastic. These are their, uh, oh, here's, here's a real nice one. These are their, and these are wonderful for portraiture. The um, synthetic mongoose. Oh, what am I doing? Wrong brush. I don't like that brush. I don't know what that one. I don't know what that one is. Okay, a little bit of canopy there. He's got a couple bright lights behind his head, uh, and there's some interesting color. God, it's, I just noticed that. A little bit of a blue, green, right back in there, and down there, and up here. See, I don't mind a light being on the back of his head. But on the front of his head, it starts to interfere with his face. So I, it's not that I can't use some lights there. It's that I can't use them there. I can use, there's a couple of them over here. I can use that, a little bit of that. And then down below, throw some ochre into it. And just we're going to put in right around from his mouth, right about here, down and here. down. I'm just going to leave that alone. And then I'm going to take the same color and I'm going to move it over here. Right there. Down to the where the piano is. And right there. And then I'm going to lift it up and just hit that part of it. Okay. Now it should have been higher here. Okay, a little bit of color and activity back here. And the characters back in there. So I'm kind of building up to something. I may want to come in here and put a little bit of a, a feel. I'm just making this up too, just to show the edge of that. I'm just looking at spacing and it feels about right. It feels like I can get by with it. So. We're being kind of abstract with it anyway. Um, go back to the blue green color that I was using just a little bit ago. And I can see a little bit of it happening right here. Wow, cool. There. So we're giving a feeling of all this kind of activity back here without identifying exactly what the heck it is. The front of the, I wanna show off the front of this piano a little bit, right about here. So I'm just taking some, I see warms back there. This is where, and I know I've mentioned this, this is where 
it's helpful if you look into your photograph as opposed to just kind of looking at it kind of like you would by that I mean if you just glance at a photo you just see the photo but if you take your time and look into it you can actually see what's going on what's happening so we're going to start with that um, there's I can put some of that stuff in up above uh, I don't know if I want to um, just because of time I might eh, let's take the 12 let's put let's put at least this part I'm straightening it out too I'm not it's above his head it's about here So it feels like there's something back there. Then they're gonna have a little on the top of that piano. We're gonna to wanna to show that off um, and I will, but I'm not gonna right now. Uh, I'm gonna pop a few lights back in there and then we're gonna switch down onto the head. I wanna work for about 15 to 20 minutes on the head and then go back and refine some things. Um, let's pop a few lights back into, the, uh, into this area back in here. One is I wanna put right here. Two right there, three. Huh, not bad. Uh, that's, by the way, should have told you, that's pure Naples yellow light. No other color mixed in it. Take the same color. So if I go to white here, like I've seen people do, it will just, it'll ruin the painting. It'll stand out so darn much. Same color, a touch of white in it. Oh, I can see. I'm gonna get a little something in there first. I see a little glow around it. So I don't wanna paint the glow around it. What I wanna do is I want the light to be the star and the glow to be kind of subordinate, sit behind it a little bit. So what we're gonna do, I threw that warm color in. Now I'm gonna go back with the Naples yellow, maybe a hint of white into it and medium. And we'll hit that bright. There and there. So we're adding all that kind of fun activity back in here. One of the things that I don't like, see this edge should be here and not where I had it. Diana wants to know if you ever do underpainting. No, almost never. Uh, the only, I, if you mean underpaint, like in a, I, I've taught it. Uh, because it's a it's a process that I think some people need to know. Um, and I assume by underpainting, you're talking about like a grise, like painting the whole thing in burnt umber and then or black and white and then coming over it. I assume that's what you mean. Um, I don't. The reason I don't, it's pretty simple. I like a la prima direct painting. Um, that doesn't mean that it, from time to time I might not glaze a piece if I need to punch it. But my, my preference is always direct painting. So for my own work, I don't. The only time, again, I do anything close to that is in portraiture, where I will lay some tones down in a, in a portrait piece, simply because um, for accuracy. I, don't, I wanna make sure I've got that. In, I'm talking about commission portraits, by the way. Uh, I wanna make sure I've got the that, that individual, whoever is hiring me, I have them down. And that's, that's my main reason for doing it. Again, there's so many different directions you can go. There's nothing wrong. I, I, by me telling you I don't do it, I'm not saying it's a bad thing to do. I think it's a great thing to do, but it has to feel comfortable. Um, I know I've, I've brought this up before. I, bring it up to my classes when I teach all the time and even in workshops I bring it up. Um, have fun. It should, this should be fun for you. It should be a way that you want to work. It shouldn't feel like, oh my God, this process is so laborsome, you know, labor, labor heavy, so to speak. It should feel like, if you like, do, if you love doing that kind of intense, under painting, under drawing, absolutely do it. You can, the results you can get are wonderful. But by all means, 
enjoy it. If it, if you don't like doing it, I'm gonna you know. It's, it's like the old joke. Every time you if every time you move your arm, it hurts. Don't move your arm. Okay. So every if you're doing a painting and you just that you hate the process. Uh, because most paintings are come from what people love to do. Most great paintings come from what people love to do. So if you love that kind of, of hard work, absolutely do it. But if you don't, don't do it. And that's pro probably the main reason I don't do it is I don't enjoy doing the painting twice. In other words, doing the underpainting and then coming in. I have taught and I've done demonstrations for still life classes where we've taught that way. We've taught that grisaille where you do that wonderful underpainting. And, um, and it's something that I think every artist should at least try. And then if you don't like it, again, don't do it. Yeah, um, there are. I know as an illustrator, very often I would do a, a charcoal or graphite underdrawing and get a lot of my values worked out in there, and then and then paint over it. So, in in that regard, I did do it. Okay, let's get let's go into his face a little bit and take this number eight. I'm going to switch down and go to even a smaller brush. I might even go to my one of my. Um, Let's see. I want to go to a. Number eight, too. Um, I'm going to stay with Ivory for a little bit and then maybe switch down to something else. Uh, I want to keep I want to keep my a, a certain amount of boldness to, to the way I'm painting. So I don't want to do a, a major blending. It's not generally what I do anyway. Uh, but I'm going to break it up. I'm going to like I'm going to chew it up a little bit here. A little bit more there. I, the drawing in the nose. The nose I have it off because the nose comes out here more. Yep. All right. I'm going to switch down to a smaller brush right now. Let's see if I've got all my really cool. Uh, Got to look for all, where I have all my brushes stashed. Okay. You, know, you guys are wondering what I'm doing. I'm actually thumbing through. I've got probably probably close to 100 brushes handy. And I'm thumbing through all those trying to find the one that I actually want to use right now. I want to go small. So I might go with, I don't want to go that small. That's uh, so what we got here. Okay, I got it. <laughs> I think it's, it's a little stiff, which means I haven't cleaned it really well. Um, and it's one of the uh, synthetic mongoose that I talked about. So, we're gonna clean it up pretty good. Get rid of that, by the way. I don't like that. Okay. Oh, that's good. Got a nice, it's nice and flexible now. So what I want to do is I want to take the forehead, we'll start up there, and we're going to, as you, as I see it, it lightens as it comes up here. It still stays kind of pink, but it lightens quite a bit. Too, too pink. It's probably a little too light. So I'm going to mix that into the color below it. One more try. I didn't like it. And we'll kind of softly manipulate it. Now, the ridge above the eyebrow.
And I, basically what I'm doing, I'm using a little yellow ochre and a little white in the flesh tone I already have mixed up. It's a little lighter than I want. If I go too light, because I'm painting into wet paint, I can just push that paint right back in and darken. So there's the ridge, a little bit of a cheekbone, right? Pop it right there. And you can see how the, hopefully the head is starting to illuminate more. That's pretty much what I'm trying to get at this point, getting that head to illuminate. Now, one of the things that I wanted to show, and that is down in, in this area, is as the face turns, it there's a little bit of cool light that affects it. And it's right, I'm gonna lay my little finger nail down. Just a little touch. I'm gonna bring his chin down just a little bit further. Okay. And a little bit as it comes out to his lip and a little bit on his upper lip. So what we've done is defined a little bit of the shadow. I see, and this is, I do see it. I, I definitely wanna go darker in this because I haven't done that. But I also see a little bit of coolness back under the eye. All right. And we're gonna to go to the shadow color that I had mixed up, clean it up a little bit. I wanna darken it, it's not as dark as I want, but it's pretty warm. So I could not only darken it, but I'm gonna add a little bit of a, a warm to it. I can add a burnt sienna, I can add a lizard crimson, uh, and then it comes up in here. It drops back on his muzzle. I'm just saying on his muzzle, there's a little bit of light. And it's right there. And what that does is define the muzzle from the front plane of that cheek. And we'll go in right now. This is why I said it. And if you guys recall, I said I could go in and spend a week for an hour or so on that head. And that's why I didn't jump into it too soon. Because even after I'm done, now what I did is I deepened the shadow and I see it get very dark around the wing of the nostril and very, very dark up kind of in the pit of where the eye socket is right there. and it, feathers out. So these are very subtle adjustments. Hopefully you guys can see them on screen because I don't know if they're pronounced enough. Uh, I see them here. So if you don't see them on screen, then what I could do is I could lie to you and tell you how great it's looking. But I won't. I will tell you when I like it and when I don't. Um, ear, inner ear the interior of the air. This is what's so great about these little, because you can just lay beautiful little marks down with these. Uh, so you can see all of a sudden that air is starting to come out. I, I'm stepping back every now and then just so I can see how the thing is shaping up. Now, because we have light here, it's defining that. So what we have to do since is do the same concept that I used on the chin. So as it moves into shadow, we're going to get a little bit of a cool light affecting that. All right. And on the front of his forehead, as I see, it can be lights from anywhere. Um, very, very light. Uh, I'm using a little medium with it just because when I mixed up a little white in that color, it felt very stiff. Now I'm gonna clean my little fingernail as I lay that stroke down. That's a little lighter than I wanted. So I'm gonna mix it back into the flesh tone. And the forehead goes in and then the angle of it angles out. So we're getting it going in and coming out. And I wanna look very carefully because I might see it a little bit there on the nose. Now, as we move it up and it affects the hair, I see it get a little cooler. So I'm gonna add a little blue. 
These are super subtle differences, but to me, they make a difference. So a lot of blue in this color. And that's my first go around with it is, is the cool. All right. I'm going to take a lighter color. I don't want it real bright, but I want to hit the cheekbone again. Also, corner of the ear. So this is where you start observing. You're, it's like you're focusing down on areas. So you're not looking at, I looked at, in the beginning, I just looked at the simple light and shadow. Now I'm saying, boy, I see a little bit more light on the nose right in there. And a little bit of light as it goes down beneath the nostril. So what we're doing is we're, literally coming in and we're starting to clarify this individual. Now, one thing I haven't done, um, and this is the darker. So I'm gonna take a burnt sienna, a little bit of blue maybe. Sometimes I throw a lizard into it because a lizard is your darkest warm color. All right, get a nice tip on your brush. Be careful with your, and take a look and see what that mouth is doing. So we get a little bit of a pull not, not dark enough, I'm going to add more asphaltum to it. Okay, that's starting to work. Haven't, I haven't even messed with his eye, just so you guys know. So we're starting to get the feeling of his mouth in. I want to get a little bit of feeling of that eyebrow. So I've added a little bit more asphaltum and the part of the eyebrow that gets the darkest is this part right here, which actually goes under your eye socket. Now, as I was painting, I messed the nostril up. So I'm gonna clearly put that back in. I'm gonna hit, go back with a cooler color and get that in. I wanna give myself enough time. Okay, I'm fine. Keep my eye, it's like, when you do these demos, at least I do, I like to keep my eye on the clock and see if I'm hitting certain marks at certain times because it's, it's important. Otherwise, the painting, I want it to be a complete statement, okay? If you guys understand, hopefully what, what I mean by a complete statement is not a complete painting. It's a, the statement of what I am painting looks complete. A little bit of that eye. Now, because I put my finger down a couple times, I've messed that area up, which is okay. I can just go back with the color right in here. A little bit of a darker definition right in here. So, and I get, uh, there's a little bit of light that occurs on his eye lid, which is right there. Now, let's start to illuminate the top of his head a little bit. I'm gonna go back, I think I'm gonna grab one of these uh, Egberts. Get add a lot more white, little Naples yellow white. I told you I didn't, I was really tempted to wanna to do this earlier. I mean, I'm using medium in this too, just a little bit of the uh, safflower oil, just because, there we go. I haven't stepped back from this, which is one of the things that I really like to do. Uh, I can't tell, I can never tell if it's working until I really get back from it. A little bit of a sheen of light there in that part of his, his hair. Even right in here, I'm getting a little bit of coolness. I don't like that, although it does extend further back. So let's get the hair. It's not as light as the first light I mix up and it's coming right there and there. Still needs to come over further. I was always 
concerned right from the outset on the shape of this guy's head, whether I had it correct or not. Uh, and I guess it doesn't, I shouldn't say the shape of this guy's head, the shape of the head. It's, it needs to feel, oh, that's what I need. I need that light behind it. So I brought more of my Naples yellow out. And let's kind of, because that'll help define the back of his head right here. Which it did, it, it did help define it. Uh, I'm gonna go in with the dark on his hair and it's asphalt and then a little bit of blue. A little bit on the warm side. If I'm gonna push it one way or the other, I'm gonna be a little warmer than I need to be. He's coming off. I still don't like, I wanna get the collar fitting better. Um, I'm gonna to need to come into that shirt one more time too at least once. So Naples and white, and we're gonna clarify that. Oh, that's a nice juicy piece of paint. Okay. And then we'll I don't want to get too tight there. It feels really almost like I've got too hard of an edge. So I'm going to kind of go back and loosen that up a little bit. That's pretty good. All right, let's go back into the shadows of the shirt. I don't want to spend too much time in any one area. So we're going to clarify that shadow. I'm going to get another shadow in here. A little bit of, okay. A little bit of reflected light down there. I got that nice little piece happening. And I see another little divot that I can pull up in there. There's a little bit of the bottom of the collar that I can begin to pull out. Now, I think I need to eliminate the face more. I don't think I have it bright enough. It's my overall opinion. And I still have a little time, so let's do that. Um, yeah, I've got time. So I'm going to brighten up that face. We're all on to know if you could talk about the glow of the thing surrounded by a dark background. I don't, uh, are you talking about these? I think so. I'm not sure about exactly what you're referring to, but um, you don't, uh, when you, yeah, first of all, when you have a dark background, you don't have to paint everything really light. Because sometimes, and a lot of times in dark backgrounds, you can get by with more color and things because even orange colors like that look light, you know, next to a, a dark, dark background. Now, I'm gonna uh, bring that ear out a little bit too. I just noticed that. Let's get the top of the ear. A lot of light right there. And Okay, I keep, if I get back, I can see it. If I'm too close, sometimes if you're too close, everything may look really good. And all of a sudden you get back and you realize, oh, it's not as strong as I thought it was. So it's why a lot of times you really need to get back as much as you can. So I wanna get, uh, one thing that isn't working right now is towards the tip of the nose, there's more light on it. So we're getting, and it literally is not coming off. The light is right, whoops. I had a blob of white. And I'm using a nice small brush so I go in and just, it's, the, it's my initial sketching brush. So there's a much brighter light on that nose. And as I stand back, it looks like it's helping. A little bit on the wing of the nostril. Now, as I'm doing that, I can also see that we get a lot of subtlety right there. It starts to bring that part of the face out a little bit. That's that's okay. It's not it's not 
right on the money, but it's close. And it comes down on, it's, it's almost like a jowl. Back of the neck, pretty warm, but red. So I didn't push the color, I don't think, enough when I first laid this in. So I'm having to do it now. Okay, that's that head's working a lot better than it did. Uh, he's got a, a wristwatch on, which kind of helps. I always love things like that because it helps define things. So I can the shape, the beautiful dark wristwatch. We can actually lay it in there, and then bring it down. That actually helped a lot, truthfully. Um, I want to clarify a little bit of the edge of um, that piano. The top, I mentioned that earlier. It's like all these things you don't want to leave out. Um, I, don't my mall stick. I don't have, do I see a mall sticker? If not, let me grab this. I can use yeah, this one here. Oh. I need to hit some of this down here. Thank you. Mall stick. Why do I want that? Because what I'm going to do is I'm going to use it to clarify the top of the piano. So now there's light on the top of that piano. There is lettering. I, if I can get it in there, I will. There is a little piece of light. It looks like it's a music stand back here, but I like the light that's back there. I don't, I'm going to use it because it clarifies part of the piano, okay? What it is almost doesn't matter. It's how it clarifies it. Now, if I look down on this part of the piano, we get a little light here too. Right? And back here, I want to fix that which means I just have to kind of hit that dark in there again. There we go. And these are the refinements. Sometimes you can over refine, by the way, too. It, it, by that, see if I can explain what I mean by that. You can put, you can make things read so clearly that you're almost overdoing it. Um, particularly on something like this where the hands are in motion and you kind of want to, as much as you can, convey that. So that's working. I want to, I want to work this out. I don't like his mouth. So we're going to use my ball stick here instead of laying my little finger down. Now we're going to kind of come in. That's a little bit better. The nose feels like it's illuminated more, but I don't like it because it's cold. So I would like it to be warmer. So I just added a little bit of cad red to the color I was already laying down. That worked pretty well. And as on the muzzle, I can add a little bit more light. I'm looking very carefully now because I didn't before. But as you go further into the piece, you basically need to go down and look and see if there's anything else. It's like there's structure back in here and I need to add that in there. And there's more structure in there. So I'm stepping back just so I can see structurally what I got going. Cause this is not, it's not a head painting but I, you want the head to be convincing probably the most refined part of the painting. Now, another thing I might do is right at this point, show off a little bit of the edge of this piano. Leave it at that. Don't do too much. The nose is quite flat right now. So I'm taking one of these little tiny liners that I've got, mixing a little light with a flesh tone. 
and we'll come in and add. I want to get a little bit of that rim light too on that. So little tiny line right bottom of his ear, a little bit more refined. Whoops, hate, hate it when I do that. Let's do it again. Interior of the ear. I think I've added uh, too much light in the eye socket. I want to get this a little bit of the ground plane in too, just so I don't want to, I don't want to literally ignore that. Other thing, corner of the mouth. Hardest part of the face to paint. I've, I've said that for years, I still believe it. Why? It's too subtle. It's so subtle that it's very, very difficult. You got to get it just right. It's, uh, the, for example, the nose is not subtle. The nose is pretty strong and prominent. Uh, eye sockets generally aren't that, unless you're doing children, they're not that subtle. They're pretty strong. Um, the corner of the mouth is got structure, but my God, it's so subtle that it's very, very difficult sometimes to get it just right. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to lay in, um, I'm going to take that same brush as long as I've got it and take the my very dark color. And since I was asked earlier, I'm going to get the back of his pants. And I want kind of a nice dry stroke here. And then we're going to get the back of that chair that I see. And it's basically got, he's got one line there. Let's get it in there. And the other one there. And the top of the chair actually has, there's, there's a touch of light on it. You can't see it. No, I'm sure you guys can't see it, but. If I look into the paint, into my piece, the top of that chair is about here, and there's a little bit of light on it. So I'll like, now there's a little red back. I don't want to put that red. As much as it's a really pretty little thing to add, it just, it doesn't make sense. So next thing I'm going to do, we've got this nice dark in here, and I'm going to take a little bit of green and kind of mix with this dark become Okay, there's a little bit of a ground plane there. It tends to be kind of ochery, a little bit warm. Uh, I like that. I'm going to keep it pretty much that way. And we're just going to kind of put it in here. And that's going to define this leg. And I don't want to over define these areas. I want them to be very free and almost abstract. Bottom of his cuff. And we're going to soften that dark just by taking this brush and running it over it. And I'll take that same color that I was using right there. Now, what do I like and don't like? Because I still have about 10 minutes left. What do I like and don't like? Uh, there's a lot in the head I don't like. And I keep going back to that. I want to go back and soften some of these areas back in here. I want to go back here. I like that better. I also kind of messed up. I'm trying to loosen it up. I felt like I was getting, for the kind of painting I'm doing, I feel like I was getting a little too tight in the face. Tom had a question about when mixing in a medium, what is the thickness or viscosity of your paint for the majority of the painting that's best? Is it slippery or? Yeah, the viscosity, uh, uh, it's, that's one of the better questions that's happened in all these weeks. Uh, that's the hardest thing to deal with, I believe. I, I truly believe for, for myself, when I was learning how to paint, I spent two years, the first two years of my struggling with learning how to paint, dealing with paint viscosity. Uh, I was either too dry, too scratchy, so to speak, or if I was too wet, it just didn't flow right. 
So I find, and somebody, uh, I had Don Putnam was one of my really powerful teachers. He used to say he liked his paint to be the consistency of cream, thick cream. Um, I find it depending on what you're painting and that means kind of subject matter, but it also means what part of an element you're painting, you need to consider the viscosity of the paint. And the viscosity, um, if I am struggling to get paint to go down, I know I have to loosen it up. If on the other hand, I go to put paint down and it goes down too easily, I know that I've got the paint too loose. So I'm, I'm constantly working if my paint is real sticky in the beginning, I tend to work more with um, turf. As I'm piling paint onto paint, as I'm doing now, I tend to work more with uh, medium. Medium meaning um, linseed oil, safflower oil, whatever, whatever the medium of your choice is. Uh, so as you go to pile paint on, on other paint, your paint has got to be, it can't be too thin. So that's why I like the oil. For example, right now I mix white, I mix some safflower oil. And what we're gonna do is I'm gonna take the shoulder, as you can see right here, and I'm gonna whiten it. I'm gonna lighten it up because the light feels like it's coming stronger at this point than any other point. And I'm using, the reason I'm using this brush is I, I'll keep a very fresh, stroke to it. So I've lightened that part. Now at the same time, I would take that same color and I want, so you can see how I'm just laying the paint right on it. Now, if the paint goes on and it doesn't mix, uh, this is a clean brush. Whoops, no, it's not. <laughs> I had it laying down on paint. So I'm gonna clean it with just some linseed oil, not some turp, because I don't want turp in my brush. Okay, so that's clean now. So I'm gonna take, i just do that. So sometimes I don't, you work with the paint that's there. You do not have to apply all new fresh paint. Sometimes you can just take the paint that is already there and like, I don't like the outside. I want that hair softer. So what I'm gonna do is do that. I'm gonna hit a couple of strokes in here, brighter. That's, that's a much whiter white on this sleeve. So I've used whiter paint in that. Now, if I go too white on that, then I've got to pronounce the face more. But in, in taking that, that, uh, that brush I was using, again, I'm going to clean it with linseed and not turp. Okay, or safflower. So there's, you can see there's no color in it. In the, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to soften this edge. And can use uh, sometimes a fan brush really works well at this point. I, I want that hair, I see the hair standing out in front of his head a little bit. So I want the hair to kind of come out a little bit like that. That's much better, much better. And I can take my stronger white last minute and pop, pop it right there where it's the brightest. And that feels better on his head, on his um, forehead. I want to make sure I get the shadow Going in here, um, I can see changes that need to be made. This is where you're done and you walk away and you come back and you discover other things that you can deal with. One of the things to do, see if I can get the right color. And it's pretty close. Now I gotta get back here. I want that jowl to stand out a little bit more probably wouldn't appreciate it if you heard me referring to his jowls, but 
Uh, Jennifer wants to know when you use OMS, do you use it straight or do you mix any oil into it? OMS. I know, I'm trying to. As soon as you uh, tell me about OMS, I, I'm sure I could tell you. I'm not sure what you mean by OMS. Mineral spirits. What oil, oil mineral? Do I mix? Yeah, sometimes if you're asking me if sometimes do I mix um, linseed or whatever whatever the medium is, if I mix it with turf, the answer is yes. Like yeah. Um, yeah, do that. Not always. Yeah, but, literalist mineral spirits. Thanks, Jennifer. Okay, but that's but I do. Literally, uh, yes, I do. Sometimes the oil by itself is too, um, I need it thinner, let's put it that way. And the, uh, the turp will thin it a, a lot more than the, um, oh, that's better. We're getting this guy's forehead. I don't like this right here. I think that's too dark and it's, Let's see. Let's see if I can fix that before we we break here. We're just about done. Uh, he's coming together slowly but surely. I've overpronounced a few things. The, wheel, the this area here, that area there. That's what I mean by overpronounced. Just paint back into them till it feels right. I don't like this at all. I want. I would definitely want um, that area to work its way out and maybe lighten up a little bit, and definitely lighten up as it goes back into uh, that area. I'm squinting my eyes a lot right now, just to kind of try to see things that aren't working. I like the lights back here. I think they work pretty good. I'm not crazy about that, that uh, banner I put in there. I don't think that's working good at all, but it's there. Um, Are you finished with the left side of the piano? With the, this side of the piano? The left side. Yeah, pretty much. I don't think I'm gonna do a lot more to it. I could see a couple things I could do. I see one little thing I could do. Uh, that area needs to kind of come over as does that. I can't tell what's going on there. So when you can't, and you're, I, I'm not a piano aficionado. Uh, so you kind of have to kind of keep it indicative. Don't try and, uh, don't try and over pronounce something that you don't know what the heck you're doing. Last thing I'm gonna do, if I can here, is I'm gonna add a little bit of that type on the piano because I think it helps a little bit. I'm just gonna ask you. So it's kind of cool. It's I I mixed, I'm gonna mix a little green into this color. And nope, I wanna go just a little bit lighter. So I'm gonna throw some ochre into it, maybe a little bit more green. We'll try it one more time. That feels better. I don't want it to stand out as much as it does in the um, in the piece. I want it to be much more subtle. It's the name of the piano too. I can see. So I'm using some ochre and some green, and I mix that back into, and then I will. There we go. It's that, and then we're just going to kind of go. Oh, it's not sticking. Viscosity. I added more oil. It sticks. And there's the reason that you add more oil. So that's going to be a B. Jerry wants to know if you could, are you going to define his left leg at all? No. And then also Oh, actually there is a little bit of light. I could. Yeah, let's count it. Um, right here, but that makes, that's about all I would do there. And what that means is now I have to bring that down further because that's where his leg would be. But no, I wouldn't. I want. I don't want to define everything. Um, you want. You want some things to just disappear. And then I'll try to. Um, Tom would like me to zoom in so we could see the paint strokes afterwards. So, okay, 
that. All right, I'm gonna. All right, now clean it up. I've indicated it in there about the value that I want. Now I want to make get that piano. And we'll. That's the bottom of the letters. And it's a B, so we just kind of want to put a feeling of a B. Don't want to overstate it. Actually, I don't, I don't even care if it reads. So I want to be kind of secondary. Yeah, I want it to be there, but I don't want it to be defined. And sometimes I'll put it in there and I'll wipe it out and put it in there again. But lettering. Lettering is really, really difficult for me. I just am not, uh, you don't want it to jump is all I can tell you. And I can see that's getting a lot of glare. So I'm gonna take one of these and stroke down on it. You see what happens when you stroke down? I lose the glare. Get rid of some of this stuff here. That's where his leg would be right there. Uh, the corner of that piano was more rounded, which I didn't get. Not that it matters, but I might want to knock that off a little bit, round it. And I might want to define. I hate to over define things. Uh, I have a tendency to. It's, it's a bad tendency. Um, and so a lot of times I've taught myself to actually go back and lose things. Um, and I know that's anybody, any of you guys that have done illustration work, that's illustration training. Illustration training, they want everything cleanly defined. And for painting, I think it's much more interesting to let things get lost. Uh, often in teaching, we'll refer to that to, as lost and found. You lose something and then you find it again. Guy all the way over here. Okay, I could stop almost any time. I mean, there's a lot I could, I, like I said, I could go back and fuss on that head, if, particularly if I stood back more. And uh, I kind of like the way the background is working with him. Um, I think I might want to maybe add. A little light here and there. Again, I don't want to call too much over here, but I might, for example, just there's a little bit of light that sneaks across. You just don't want it to compete with the face. So the front of the face, I know for a fact I could put a lot more of a of an edge light on. I can see it as I look very carefully. I'll do that, and that'll be the last thing I'm gonna do. White and Naples yellow and a lot of medium. And let's use it also instead of my little finger here. And let's come right down from here. There. There. And boy, do I just, I didn't see it earlier, but I see it as it goes down into shadow under the nostril. And that's about all I'm going to do right now. I, I see other things I could do, but I just don't want to uh, take more time. For So for my hour and a half situation, that's about all I'm going to get done. Um, hopefully it worked for you guys. Sorry about the glare. Yeah, glare is something. The only thing I can do to is if you shoot, go up above it and shoot down on it and you'll lose the glare. You'll get, you'll see less glare. But if you go in here, you can see kind of some of the paint strokes. So it's it's pretty indicative. And I have mentioned this many times as you do this kind of these quickie paintings, which for me, this is relatively quick. Uh, think of it as indication. Don't think of it as a total refined painting. Um, and as you even even if you're going to do a long painting, Think of it as indication and then go back and make it cleaner, make it work. You can, you can do that at any time. Um, I don't know why I left that. Yeah. Uh, so that's about it. I'll probably do a couple touch-ups on it and I'll bet you 
knowing me, it's going to be in the head because uh, I haven't really stood way back and looked at it. Um, there's things I like, there's things I don't like. Uh, I like the effect. The effect is what I wanted. Um, I don't know if I, this worked really well. I think I might lose that completely. Um, it just, it bothers me a little bit. But all in all, you guys get the idea. Okay, hopefully it helped. Um, gonna do something different next week. Haven't decided what. Uh, got a couple ideas, I may paint snow. <laughs> Since it's gonna be a hundred degrees. I wish we were all in Piazza San Marco right now, listening to his lovely music. All right.